אני אוהב אתכם, השם ישמור אתכם. תודה על מה שאתם עושים, זה מחזק את כל העם, בכל העולם. תודה רבה! In the early morning hours of October 7th, thousands of Hamas terrorists infiltrated the area in Israel known as Otef Aza, the southern communities along the Gaza border. This beautiful area is filled with kibbutzim and moshavim, and home to many that see living in this area as part of a larger peace and coexistence movement. On this typical Shabbat morning, when people were sleeping or out on an early morning jog, a nightmare unfolded. Hamas violence spared no one. Babies, toddlers, teens, the elderly, Holocaust survivors, and entire families brutally terrorized, murdered, and captured. Many are still unaccounted for. In the end, Hamas kidnapped an estimated 240 people, representing at least 25 nationalities, including 10 Americans. Adan Alexander, a graduate of Tenafly High School in New Jersey, was kidnapped that day. He was a soldier in Otef Aza, and his mother had spoken to him just that morning. Here is a video of Adan that his family shared with us. Please turn your attention to the screens. My son is only 19 years old. He just graduated last year from Tenafly High School. We live in Tenafly, New Jersey. His sister Mika is a senior now in the high school. We just yeah. know that he's alive and he's in Gaza, kept by Hamas. You know that he is. They told yeah. us that he's alive and He's over there at Gaza, and we're just hoping for him to come back home. I want people to know that he's just such a happy and lively kid. He cares so much about family and his relationship with me and his, um, our younger brother, Roy. And he just will do anything for his friends and anything for his family. And he's just truly like my best friend. You know, I'm 17. He's only two years older than me. And I just, I'm patiently waiting for the day that we're going to be reunited again. With us today is Mika Alexander, Adan's youngest sister. Mika is 17 and goes to high school in New Jersey. When her brother Adan was kidnapped, she was here in the U.S. Since that day, Mika and her family have been doing everything they can to bring Adan home. Mika is here to share with us what she and her family are going through and share a message with all of you. Mika, thank you for coming today. What can you tell us about Adan? How was it growing up as his younger sister? Growing up as Adan's younger sister, we've always seen how brave he was and how much he cherishes being with family. And when we were younger, we maybe weren't the closest, but as we got older, I started realizing how brave and extraordinary he was. And he always achieved what he wanted, and I will always look up to him till this day. How did you respond when he told you he wanted to go to Garan Sabar and join the IDF? I mean, we always knew that his heart was with Israel and he just always wanted to do something meaningful before he, you know, went to college like his other friends. So we didn't, this wasn't really a big surprise to us that he wanted to do something for his country and for his family. And as a family, he always puts us first and he values us so much and he just appreciates and loves everyone around him and it's truly inspirational. I'm sure none of us can imagine what this last month has been for you. Mika, can you please share with us how you're holding up? 
Honestly, I've learned how to be patient. You know, waking up every morning and not knowing what's going on with my brother it really teaches you a lesson of learning how to stay in tune with yourself and listen to what you need and be able to go around and ask for help. Like, you shouldn't be scared. You should be okay with not being okay. And I learned how specifically to be extremely patient, and it's been paying off. What would you tell him if you could send him a message right now? I mean, of course, as you may know, I will tell him that we love him and we love you and we just really need you to come back. And I know this reunion is going to be insane. Like talking about this whole experience is just going to be so it's going to give me closure, me and the whole family. And yeah. As we look out and see so many people gather here today, what would you like to say to everyone? I would just say thank you so much for coming here and supporting this campaign. And we just need to bring Idan and all of the other hostages home now. Bring them home. 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 Um, Yisrael Chai. Thank you, everyone. I'm speaking to you from the single...
תל אביב זה ניווט, זהו איתה חולה עזוב את העין, כי אין רחוב שלא יזכיר אותה. מוזיקה זה ניווט, זהו איתה חולה להפסיק לשיר, כי זה לא כיף להתרגש לבד. עדיין משתכרים ביחד, עדיין לא מעניין את אף אחד, עדיין לא מדברים על פעם. תל אביב זה ניווט, זהו איתה חולה עזוב את העין, כי אין רחוב שלא יזכיר אותה. מוזיקה זה ניווט, זהו איתה חולה להפסיק להשיב, כי זה לא כיף להתרגש לבד. עדיין משתכרים ביחד, עדיין לא מעניין את אף אחד, עדיין לא מדברים על פעם. My name is Tova Felchu. My Hebrew name is Tova Felchu. And my Starbucks name is Tova Felchu. What a thrill it is for me to be here. I've played big houses, but ain't never played anything like this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We stand here in the tens of thousands today, and usually, even if you have 10 Jews, you have 10,000 opinions. But today, in the thousands, we stand as one to say, I'm Yisrael Chai. 
the people of Israel live. I stand here short, I was a runner for 40 years, but tall for the almost 200 innocent citizens of Israel, well, almost 200 Israeli children of Israel who are now orphaned, for the 240 innocent citizens of Israel still held in captivity by Hamas. I stand here for the kidnapped babies and the Holocaust survivors abducted and hidden somewhere in Gaza. We stand here together as the yard site candles for over 1,400 slaughtered in the sovereign state of Israel only because they were Jews. Sound familiar? We know that to lose a life is to lose a universe. And as we stand shoulder to shoulder, we transform thousands of our Yartzeit candles into one supernova of light and hope, illuminating the memories of those we have lost and shedding light on the murderers who brought them to their death. We stand here firm against global anti-Semitism. We stand here firm in confrontation of anti-Semitism here in these United States. We stand here to say enough, must speak, must speak. Our hearts also go out to the Palestinian people who have been used by and suffered at the hands of Hamas to further Hamas's savage agenda. We are now engaged in a battle reaching beyond any Arab-Israeli conflict. We are engaged in a battle fighting for a civilized world. We stand here knowing that the halls of our universities should be havens of enlightenment and moral clarity and not places where Jewish students, Jewish faculty, or any minority feels outcast and afraid of being physically abused. We know college and university presidents and a righteous one is here today from Dillard. But we know the college and university presidents, if you remain weak, if you remain silent, you are complicit. As Einstein said, the world will not be destroyed by those who do evil, but by those who watch them and do nothing. However, since October 7th, amidst the darkness, we've seen glimmers of light. World landmarks lit up in blue and white from New York to Miami, from Paris to Prague and Baku, showing our beloved and brave Israel that she does not stand alone. As Golda Meir, the most important person I've ever had the honor to play, wow, in my, wow, wow. I think Golda may be here today. As Prime Minister Golda Meir said, some people love you, and some people love you and show up. You show up, and that makes all the difference. Indeed, the people of Israel live. So breathe with me now and repeat with me three times. Am Yisrael Chai. Am Yisrael Chai. Am Yisrael Chai. Thank you. God bless you. Please welcome Van Jones. Uh, you look beautiful. You look beautiful. Uh, why am I here? Why, why am I here? I'm here because the horror and the terror that unfolded in Israel and Palestine have sent shockwaves far beyond their borders that affect 
and disrupt lives right here in the United States. Now, if you're not Jewish, you may not know this, but since October 7th, there has been literally an explosion of violence against Jewish people, attacks against Jewish people, uh, horrific acts of hatred against Jewish people. The FBI says it's been unprecedented, 400% uh, increase just in the past three weeks. Uh, you, if you don't know that, it's because your social media algorithm is not telling you that. And you might want to ask yourself why. But once you know, once you know, you cannot be silent. I don't want to be silent because the Jewish community, the Jewish community stood with the civil rights movement. It stood with the civil rights movement. Walking arm in arm, facing death, going to jail, the Jewish community stood with the civil rights movement. And I cannot be silent when Jews fall under attack today. I just can't do it. And that's why I'm here. And that's why I'm here. Now, whatever our different political beliefs and views are about what's happening overseas, you do not have to support all the policies of Israel to support and love and stand with all the people of Israel during a time of profound mourning. During a time of profound mourning. That's why I'm here. Now, like all of us, and as was just said, uh, my heart breaks for all the Israeli children. My heart breaks for all the Palestinian children. And my heart breaks for all of the Jewish American children who are now also living in fear. I pray that every single hostage is released. I pray that. I pray that. Bring them home. Bring them home. Bring them home. And I also pray, I also pray that Hamas ends its reign of terror. I pray that. I pray that. And I have to say, I'm a peace guy. I'm a peace guy. I pray for peace. No more rockets from Gaza and no more bombs falling down on the people of Gaza. God protect the children. God protect children. Let's end all the horror and all the heartbreak in the Holy Land. Let's end all of it. Let's end all of it. But I'll be honest in closing. When I think about what's happening over there, I don't feel powerful to do something about what's happening over there. What I do feel powerful is to maybe do something about what's happening here. Let's take a stand here against anti-Jewish bigotry. Let's take a stand against Muslim. Let's, ta let's take a stand here against hatred. Let's take a stand here against hatred of all kinds. I don't want any Jewish mother to be afraid here to drop her baby off at the JCC. I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want any Jewish son to be afraid to leave his dorm room and go to the Hillel Center for a meal. I don't want that. I don't want that. And I don't want any rabbi tonight to have to go and buy an extra can of white paint just to be able to paint over a swastika on a synagogue tomorrow morning here in the United States. I don't want that. I don't want that. And I definitely don't want any Jewish daughter, which I just learned, to change her name in her rideshare app because she's afraid for her driver to know that she is Jewish. That should not be happening here. That should not be happening here. So, no matter what happens any place else, we can do better here. No more horror there. No more hatred here. You are not alone. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
Welcome, Omer Adam. תודה רבה. 
Thank you very much. Anatoly Sharansky has fought heroically, alone, under tremendous pressure, as a proud Jew, as a freedom-lover person, as a man with a mission. from everywhere, thousands of Jews and non-Jews, they streamed into Washington with but one common agenda. No, we would not be silent. History will judge if the world had enough will and resolve to do what you are doing today, to stand up, to be counted, and to make your voices be heard. Please welcome Natan Sharansky. Dear, dear family, when small group of Soviet Jews started to fight to move to Israel, they challenged the most powerful empire, the most cruel dictatorship of those days. And that's why many people thought that their struggle, our struggle, is doomed. How can few men and women bring down the empire on their own? But the fact is that we never thought that we are alone. We knew the Jewish people and the state of Israel is with us. From, from the small demonstration initiated by four students at Columbia University in 1964 to the massive rally of 250,000 Jews just here in this place in 87, there were three generations of world Jewry who fought for our freedom. Many of your grandfathers fought for our freedom. Many of your parents fought for our freedom. Many of you fought for our freedom. And that was what made all the change. So, when in the long years in prison, I was told again and again, that I am alone, that I am abandoned, that we failed. It was enough for me simply to remember all those faces of Jews from America, from Britain, from Canada, who were coming to us, to Moscow, to support us, to understand that KGB is lying. Because they, you, you're bringing so much love and so much strength to us. This picture of one Jewish fighting family was always in my head. And that is why it was so clear that whatever will be my personal fate, the outcome of our struggle can be only our victory. This clearness that as long as we all stand together and fight together, we will win 
Is that what gives us hope today in Israel? Because we in Israel go through difficult days. We go from one funeral of the soldier who fell fighting against Hamas yesterday and another funeral of the family who was tortured and killed five weeks ago, but was identified only now. And in between you go to the family whose children were kidnapped, became hostages. And wherever you go, you hear more and more stories about torture and murder. How you keep going? You keep going by doing it together. When our brave soldiers, real brave soldiers, are fighting, knowing very well that they fight for the future of Israel and Jewish people. When all our country, in solidarity, in mobilization, in devotion, is embracing them, we know we again are again one fighting family. Family which is so strong, which is so, has so much love. And you know that there is only one outcome in this battle, our victory. But then we find out that there is another front in this war. And it's not in the tunnels of Aza, not in the hills of Galil, but in Harvard, in Yale, in Penn, in Columbia, in all those places who are supposed to be the bastions of enlightenment and wisdom. And from these places we hear today the gleeful cheers, gleeful cheers of those who watch this most barbaric, awful pogrom in modern history and say, that is liberation movement. They speak about democracy and they are ready to give away on the most and the only democratic country in, our, uh, in the Middle East. They speak about justice, and they are ready to welcome the killers of babies. They speak about feminism, and they are ready to welcome rapists of our girls. And, dear friends, we together will fight against those who try to give legitimacy to Hamas. We will fight for Israel. We will fight for every Jew. We'll fight against anti-Semitism. We'll fight for the values and against corruption of those values which are in the center of our Jewish identity and American identity. And now, and now look at those tens of thousands of students who came from Harvard and Yale and uh, 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 New York University and Penn and other places. You are not frightened, you are not silenced. Together we'll win because we are one Jewish family. We defeated Soviet Union, we'll defeat our enemies today. And now I want to introduce two of these younger voices of a modern fighting family. Michal Biton and Ariel Mokhtar Zadeh, Ago, my family and tens of thousands of Iranian Jews were forced to flee from the country they had called home for generations. In a moment's notice, their world turned upside down. 
Jewish leaders were falsely accused of espionage and executed in public squares. Jewish schools were targeted and closed. And Jewish families were forced to forfeit their homes and their businesses. 44 years ago, the Islamic Republic waged its war of terror and intimidation against the Iranian Jewish community. On October 7th, they waged that war against the international Jewish community. In the wake of the revolution, my family made the choiceless choice to leave behind everything they knew in pursuit of everything they dreamt could be. That I am standing here before you all today is beyond my parents' wildest dreams. It is also a manifestation of their greatest nightmare that we still live in a world where Jews can be butchered in broad daylight as the world watches in silence. But my story is not unique. Our stories as Americans and as Jews may be written in different languages, but their arcs are one and the same. Our ancestors risked everything to reestablish themselves in America, a country they dreamed would be free of Jew hatred. Unfortunately, that dream has not yet been realized. However, one thing has changed. We no longer have to make the choiceless choice that our parents and grandparents did. We will not retreat or free. Their sacrifice demands so much more of us. Thanks to this great nation, we don't have to resort to flight. We can fight with our voices, our votes, and our feet. And we will because we know that the future of our country and the future of our people are inextricably intertwined. God bless America and Am Yisrael Chai. My name is Michal Biton. I stand here as a Latina immigrant and proud American to represent all those who know oppression. I represent my Argentinian community still haunted by the Amia bomb that tore us apart, that killed my best friend's father. It's terrorists never brought to justice. I represent my parents-in-law, Egyptian Jews who fled Nasser's persecution in Egypt as stateless refugees and built new lives here. I represent my Brooklyn neighbors, Syrian Jews who were held as virtual prisoners in Aleppo and in Damascus, stuck for decades behind an iron curtain of hate. I stand here for all of us who remember that in every generation they stand up against us to destroy us. And for all of us who thank God that America and Israel changed the world and became our safe havens. We stand here united, proud as Americans who are going to fight back against terror, who will fight back 
against anti-Semitism everywhere, in our streets and in our universities. We stand here in support of Israelis whose fathers and mothers and brothers and sisters and sons and daughters and friends were murdered or taken captive. We stand here in support of our Israeli nation who has stood up like a nation of lions. A nation of lions. To liberate Israeli and Palestinian children from the nightmare of Hamas. We stand here in the capital of this extraordinary country that has blessed us with freedom our ancestors could never have dreamed of. Here in this promised land that requires each and every one of us to pursue and expand freedom with all of our might. I stand here as a Jewish woman bearing 4,000 years of history from Abraham to my four-year-old daughter. Proud of our people who will never ever give up hope. Proud of our people who will always seek to partner with others to heal our fractured world. I stand here as an immigrant to this country that I love and call my own, ready to join with anybody who has tasted the opposite of freedom and breathe new life into our great American dream. This is our calling. Our time is now. Our work is urgent. So let us fight with everything we have, with our voices, with our feet, with our votes, with our prayers. Let us fight together against hatred and for life. May the one above bless us with the courage and the strength to write a new chapter of peace and freedom in this nation, in Israel, and around the entire world. Please welcome the chair of the Board of Trustees of the Jewish Federations of North America, Julie Platt. Wow! I'm looking out at over 200,000 gathered here today. Thank you, thank you for coming. Today, our thoughts are with the victims and survivors of October 7th, with the innocent Israeli and Palestinians suffering because of Hamas's terror, and with the families with empty seats at the dinner table. Today, our thoughts are with the brave soldiers of Israel's defense forces as they defend the state of Israel and the Jewish people. We, we thank the lone soldiers serving with such courage and all the families who must display courage every day. We also thank the first responders who have shown such incredible heroism. One of them is here with us today, Yossi Landau, Commander Zakai South. Today, our thoughts are with all the Jews around the world who have been the victims of anti-Semitic hate and violence. Most of all, today, our thoughts are with the Israeli people as they seek peace and security. I now have the tremendous honor of introducing our cherished friend and our collective hero, we know him, we trust him, we admire him, and we are filled with gratitude for his strong leadership. Friends, joining us live from the eternal capital of the state of Israel, Jerusalem, please welcome the president of Israel, Isaac Herzog. 
Thank you, Julie. Shalom, friends, sisters and brothers. Achyotai vechai. I am speaking to you from the single most sacred site in the Jewish world, the Kotel, the Western Wall in Jerusalem. The Kotel that reminds us that Am Israel, we, the people of Israel, are eternal and no one will break us. From the Jewish symbol of fulfillment of our ancient dreams, to the American symbols of freedom, liberty, and democracy. Thank you. Thank you to the hundreds of thousands who've gathered from all over the United States, all people of goodwill, friends from different communities, faiths, and denominations who've gathered today for this massive show of solidarity. In the state of Israel's darkest moment, you stood up and declared, Hineni, I am here. We are here. There's no greater and more just cause than this. Today, we come together as a family, one big mishpacha, to march for Israel. To march for the babies the boys and girls, women and men, viciously held hostage by Hamas. To march for the right of every Jew to live proudly and safely in America, in Israel, and all around the world. Above all, we come together to march for good over evil, for human morality over bloodthirst, we march for light over darkness. Eighty years ago, Jews came out of Auschwitz and vowed never again as the blue and white flag was hoisted over our ancient homeland. We vowed never again. Forty days ago, a terrorist army invaded the sovereign state of Israel and butchered hundreds upon hundreds of Israelis in the largest massacre since the Holocaust. Let us cry out together, never again, never again, never again is now. The Hamas savagery and crimes against humanity bring to my mind, as President Biden has said, the worst rampages of ISIS. We, the people of Israel, are grateful to President Biden, his administration, and so many members of Congress on both sides of the aisle. The moral clarity and bold actions of our American allies demonstrate the depth of the U.S.-Israel alliance, which is stronger than ever before. Since October 7th, Israeli society and the Jewish people have truly come together in unison. We feel our hearts beat as one. We hear our brothers' and sisters' blood crying out to us from the ground, called me achicha, so akim elai min ha'adama. Once again in Jewish history, we demand, let our people go. <laughs> Whilst our loved ones are held captive in Gaza, and our soldiers are fighting for our beloved Israel. Jews all over the world are assaulted for being Jewish. The hatred, the lies, the brutality, the disgraceful outburst of ancient anti-Semitism are an embarrassment to all civilized people and nations. 
Jews in America must be safe. Jews all over the world must be safe. I salute you, the women and men who stand up to massive hatred and pressure in the community or on campus. Just as you stand with us, we stand with you. Yeah. Dear brothers and sisters, dear friends, as President of the State of Israel, Medinat Israel, I vow to you from Jerusalem, from the Kotel, that we will heal, we will rise again, and we will rebuild. To paraphrase the prophet Zechariah, boys and girls shall once again play in the streets of Be'eri and Sderot, and the elderly shall sit peacefully by the walkways of Nachal Oz and of Fakim. And when the sounds of life and laughter return to the villages, the kibbutzim and the cities, our constant yearning for peace will return as well. Together, together we pray for the safe return of our hostages. Together, we pray for the full recovery of the wounded. And together we pray for our beloved sons and daughters in the IDF. May God bless them and keep them הקדוש ברוך הוא ישמור ויציל את חיילינו. Together we grieve and together we shall overcome. עם ישראל חי. God bless Israel, God bless America. Please join Cantor Chaim Burson from New York in the prayer for the IDF.
Welcome the chair of the Conference of Presidents, Harriet Schleifer. Thank you. Before I introduce our next speaker, I want to welcome the ambassadors from Cyprus, Greece, Guatemala, Jamaica, and North Macedonia, along with Ambassador Gilad Erdan from Israel. Welcome. As the daughter of two Holocaust survivors, I march for Israel. As a Jew, and together with you, people of goodwill and moral clarity, we march against anti-Semitism. And as a mother and ordinary citizen, I march, we march, for the hostages to be freed. Bring them home. Bring them home. Bring them home. Bring them home. Scroll. Bring them home. Bring them home. Bring them home. Scroll. We we stand here in a city often divided along partisan lines, but not when it comes to Israel. Democrats and Republicans alike are standing up and speaking out, decrying anti-Semitism, demanding an end to Hamas's reign of terror and supporting the Israeli people as they seek peace, justice, and the safe return of our hostages. Later today, we'll hear from congressional leaders in both parties who have come to show their support. They are true friends of Israel. And we have another true friend of Israel living up at the other end of Pennsylvania Avenue. <laughs> President Joe Biden has been a steadfast ally and champion of our shared values. The President's visit of condolence and friendship to Israel after October 7th moved Israelis to the core. 
we are grateful for his leadership. And now I am honored to introduce his special envoy to monitor and combat anti-Semitism, the wonderful Ambassador Deborah Lipstadt. <laughs> Two hundred and thirty years ago, President George Washington reassured the Jews of Newport that our new nation would give bigotry no sanction and persecution no assistance. His meaning and his message were quite specific. In the United States of America, the bigotry of anti-Semitism must have no place, no quarter, no haven, no home. Anti-Semitism, or more explicitly, Jew hatred, the world's longest, oldest form of prejudice, has pierced and per permeated too many countries, too many cultures, faiths, communities. It comes at us from all political, religious, and cultural directions. Groups that agree on nothing else agree on their suspicion and hatred of Jews. And if we needed any reminder about the validity of that claim, the past five weeks have made it plain. So today, as a representative of President Biden and Vice President Harris and the United States government, I can tell you without hesitation, regardless of party or political persuasion, at the White House or in the Congress, at home and abroad, this government stands shoulder to shoulder against Jew hatred. We stand arm in arm to combat anti-Semitism wherever it hides or attempts to reside. We echo our founding father unequivocally and unreservedly. Today in America, we give anti-Semitism no sanction, no foothold, no tolerance, not on campus, not in grade school, not in our neighborhoods, not in our streets of the streets of our cities, not in our government, nowhere, not now, not ever. The reason is simple. Anti-Semitism is wrong. It is hateful. It is an immediate threat to Jews everywhere. And that alone would be sufficient reason to combat it. But anti-Semitism is far more than just that. It is an affront to the integrity of our laws. It is a gateway to prejudice, racism, injustice of every form. It is a direct danger to our democracy. And we, the United States government, will fight it. Full stop. I have the honor and responsibility to travel the world, to wage this fight in foreign lands. And in the past five weeks, I have visited many of our major European allies. And the message I deliver and the message I hear everywhere is unmistakable. No sanction for anti-Semitism. When Holocaust memorials are vandalized in Canada, France, Greece, Denmark, or the United States, when Molotov cocktails are thrown at synagogues in Berlin and Montreal, when Jews peacefully protesting are physically or verbally intimidated, when Jewish children are harassed, when protesters chant, gas the Jews, when Jewish stars are painted on buildings housing Jews, that is not expressing support for Palestinian rights. That is Jew hatred, pure and simple. 
We must not be blind to the hate implicit in the widespread, widespread celebrations of Hamas's October 7th killing spree. When protesters chant, peace and glory to the martyrs, that incites more hatred, more deaths. It is a danger to the values and underpinning of the stability and decency of any society anywhere in the world. Hate is not a zero-sum game. Hate and violence directed at any member of our society because of who they are is un-American and wrong. Thankfully, countries once beset by anti-Semitism are acting to counter it. Our major European allies have deployed legions of police officers to protect Jewish institutions. But there are some countries that are spreading and fostering hatred of Jews. The world must unite to condemn and combat, combat it. Today, gathered before me on this mall, are people of all faiths, beliefs, identities, and backgrounds. You are united by your abhorrence of Jew hatred and your recognition of its lethal nature. We are grateful for the myriad of law enforcement personnel who protect us. And please, please remember to thank them. But the fact is that no group of Americans should have to live that way. They should live free, in, fee in need of no protection, unflinching and unafraid. Let me be clear, do not sink to the level of those who harass you. Do not tear down posters. Do not intimidate those who disagree with you. Do not block their path or taunt them as they do to you. But do not cower. Allow no one to make you afraid. The message is built into the Jewish people's most ancient history. Jews are strongest at their broken places. Know that this nation's leaders are determined to oppose anti-Semitism at every turn. They are by your side now and long into the future. The fight will be a long one. But Jews have faced such challenges before and have overcome them. You who hate this evil will prevail because this cause has justice wholly on its side. The fight will be won because there is no other option. And and because, as President Washington reassured the Jews of Newport, this nation gives bigotry no sanction. And 230 years later, that still holds true. Chazak ve'ematz. Chazak ve'ematz, be strong and of good courage. Thank you for that strength. Thank you for that courage. Thank you. Please welcome back to the stage Harriet Schleifer and Julie Platt. We are pleased to welcome to the stage the bipartisan bicameral leadership from the United States Senate and House of Representatives. From the United States Senate, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. From the House of Representatives, Speaker of the House Mike Johnson. From the House of Representatives, Democratic Leader Hakeem Jeffries. And representing the Senate Republican leadership, Senator Joni Ernst. Thank you, everybody. 
We are here united, Democrat and Republican, House and Senate, to say we stand with Israel. We stand with Israel. We stand. We stand. We stand. We stand. We stand. Now, my friends, there are no words for the horror that happened one month ago in Israel. The most Jews killed in a single day since the Holocaust. It brings back much darker days. And let us not forget history. History shows that when the world ignored anti-Semitism in the last century, it led to the worst catastrophe in human history. Six million Jews murdered in the Holocaust. Let us not forget history. History shows that Israel was almost destroyed in 1967 and in 1973. We cannot, we cannot, we must not let that happen again. Let us not forget history. History shows that anti-Semitism has been deep in the core of Europe for centuries and that too many European nations have never been friends of Israel. And history shows that when anti-Semitism rears its ugly head, if it's not dealt with forcefully and directly, it grows into deadly for a deadly force. But my friends, history reminds us also of one thing, that even in its darkest days, the United States has always stood with Israel, and we will do everything to see that that never, ever changes. USA, 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 we are with Israel. Let us not forget, my friends, the evils of Hamas. When Hamas says from the river to the sea, they mean all of present day Israel should be a Jewish free land. In fact, Hamas has said that what they did, the horror that they did on October 7th to the Jewish communities near the Gaza border, they should do to all Israelis. Just look at Hamas's founding document. It says, is that a Jew behind the tree? Cut down the tree so you can shoot him. That is the evil of Hamas. Never, never, never will we forget the evil of Hamas. Never again, never again, never again, never again. Now, my friends, the hostages, some of whose families are here. I hear there are parents here whose little three-year-old girl was kidnapped by the evil Hamas. When I went to Israel a few weeks ago, right after the 7th, I met with the families of those being held with three senators, six, five senators, Democrat and Republican. I heard of parents whose little babies were taken. I heard of brothers whose sisters were killed. I heard horrible stories about the brutality of Hamas, and the five of us, Democratic and Republican senators, wept and cried for a whole hour. The sadness was so great, the evil so horrible. We will continue fighting for the release of all hostages till they return to safety. Let them go. Let them go. Bring them home. Bring them home. Bring them home. Like so many Jewish people. The horrors of October 7th reminded me of what happened to my ancestors in western Ukraine when the Nazis invaded. 
So the minute I heard of what happened in January 7th, I knew I had to go to Israel. As the first ranking Jewish Senate Majority Leader, in fact, the highest ranking Jewish elected official in American history, I not only had a desire to go to Israel, I felt a special obligation to go. When I got off the plane, Israel was still shaken from what happened. I said to the Israeli people, Israel, we in America have your back. America feels your pain. We ache with you. We stand with you. And we will not rest until you get all the assistance you need. We will not rest until you get the assistance you need. My friends, in conclusion, Hamas's goal was to scare us. The, those perpetrating the poison of, of anti-Semitism and bigotry around the world are trying to scare us. But we will not allow history to slide back to the days of the Holocaust when Jews were targeted and murdered and butchered. Instead, the Jewish people will re be resilient. And today, all of you are here showing we will not hide in the face of adversity in America and in Israel. Am Yisroel Chai. Am, Am Yisroel Chai. Am Yisroel Chai. Am Yisroel Chai. Am Yisroel Chai. The people Israel here in America and in Israel, the Jewish people will live forever. Well, it is, it is so good to be with you all. What an extraordinary crowd. And it was organized in just a few days. It's amazing, amazing. There, there are few issues in Washington that could so easily bring together leaders of both parties in both chambers. But the survival of the state of Israel and her people unites us together, and it unites all Americans, all Americans. Let me be very clear. The United States stands unequivocally with our neighbor, our friend, our ally, Israel. They are they're neighbors in a global sense, that's right. Last week, a bipartisan group of members stood in solidarity on the steps of the House to mourn the loss lives in the October 7th attack and to grieve with the families of Israeli hostages that are still being held in Gaza. We heard heartbreaking and tragic accounts of their kidnappings. And of course, as you know, many of those families haven't received an update on their well-being since that day. As a parent myself, I can begin to comprehend their despair. All of us feel that way. This morning, we watched the horrific film that was produced by Hamas from their own cameras as they committed the assault. It's unspeakable. The auditorium was full of Republicans and Democrats in the House, and they wept as we watched the film together. Most couldn't sit through it. These Israeli hostages were kidnapped in their homes by barbaric Hamas terrorists for simply being Jewish and living in Israel. And as Prime Minister Netanyahu says so well, this is a fight between good and evil, between light and darkness, between civilization and barbarism. Barbarism. The calls for a ceasefire are outrageous. We stand with you in that. Hamas terrorists wage the bloodiest assault on Jewish lives since the Holocaust, and there are hundreds of hostages, many of them Americans, still stuck inside Gaza. Israel will cease their counteroffensive when Hamas ceases to be a threat to the Jewish state. But Hamas's genocidal and anti-Semitic rhetoric isn't just confined to Gaza, as you know. 
The war in Israel has awakened an alarming amount of anti-Semitism towards Jewish people here in the United States and across the globe. From the halls of Congress to college campuses, this rise of anti-Semitism must be stopped. We've heard many echo the Hamas rallying cry of from the river to the sea, and I'm convinced that a lot of these college students that are engaging in these protests do not understand that, that is an explicit call for the extermination of Israel. It is happening daily in our country, as you know, and it is unacceptable for Jewish Americans to feel unsafe at home. It is unacceptable for Jewish businesses to face violence, vandalism, and threats. It is unacceptable for universities to allow Hamas apologists to assault and accost Jewish students on campus. It is unacceptable for any political leader in this nation to give credence to this dangerous rhetoric. We can and we must do more to stand with our great ally and friend. And it is my hope that this gathering today serves as a reminder to the entire world but also to those within our own borders, that the United States stands proudly with Israel and the Jewish people forever, forever. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of this. God bless you. Lita Schumer, Speaker Johnson, Senator Ernst, all those assembled, shalom. shalom. What an honor and a blessing to stand with you in solidarity during this very difficult moment for the Jewish people and for Israel. Hamas brutally attacked Israel on October 7th because Hamas wants to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. So let me be clear. We will never let that happen. Yeah! Congress will continue to support, in a bipartisan way, the state of Israel and Israel's unequivocal right to exist as a Jewish and democratic state, always and forever. Always and forever. Always and forever. From the very beginning of this conflict, President Joe Biden has strongly supported the state of Israel. And I strongly support President Biden's supplemental funding request for Israel, for Ukraine, and for humanitarian assistance. We must also decisively address the cancer of anti-Semitism with the fierce urgency of now. An attack on any of us is an attack on all of us. And we are going to do everything possible to stop the anti-Semitic attacks against our Jewish brothers and sisters. The United States and Israel have a special relationship. Our commitment to Israel's security is ironclad. And let me be clear, Israel has an absolute right to defend itself against Hamas terror. There's a question on the minds of many of us. Where do we go from here? We must stand with Israel in its effort to decisively defeat Hamas and make sure that this brutal terrorist regime can never rise again. We must make sure that every single hostage is returned home safely. And then we must stand together to secure a just and lasting peace between Israel and the Palestinian people. The special relationship between the United States and Israel is, yes, rooted in our shared values and our shared strategic interests. But the moral case for Israel is anchored in the painful history of the Jewish people. 
For centuries, Jews have been persecuted, brutalized by anti-Semitism, and violently thrown out of country after country. The Jewish people were violently expelled from Jerusalem by the Roman Empire. The Jewish people were violently expelled from Alexandria. The Jewish people were violently expelled from France. The Jewish people were violently expelled from England. The Jewish people were violently expelled from Spain. The Jewish people were violently expelled from Switzerland. The Jewish people were violently expelled from Portugal. The Jewish people were violently expelled from countries all throughout Europe. The Jewish people were violently expelled from the Middle East. The Jewish people were systematically murdered by the Nazi regime. The Jewish people were violently attacked by Hamas on October 7th, resulting in the largest loss of Jewish life in a single day since the Holocaust. So we are here, more than 100,000 people strong, to unequivocally declare never again. Never again. Never again. The State of Israel must always exist as a safe haven for the Jewish people. And so we stand together with the Jewish community in Israel. We stand together with the Jewish community in America. We stand together with the Jewish community all throughout the world. We stand together in the effort to crush anti-Semitism. We stand together in the effort to crush anti-Jewish hate. We stand together in the effort to bring home the hostages. We stand together in the effort to make sure that America will always be a safe space for the Jewish community in every single zip code. God bless the hostages, God bless Israel, God bless the United States of America. United States of America, do you stand with Israel? Folks, I am here today as a longtime friend and staunch supporter of our greatest partner in the Middle East, Israel. In December 2014, before I was even sworn in to the United States Senate, I visited Kibbutz Niraz in southern Israel by the Gaza border. One of the kibbutzim that was hit the hardest by Hamas on October 7th. Israel and her people hold a very special place in my heart. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here to show your unwavering support for our Jewish brothers and sisters. What Iran backed Hamas perpetrated on October 7th was pure evil, and those monsters deserve nothing short of complete and total destruction. Three days after the heinous terror attacks, I was on the ground in Israel meeting with American and Israeli families, and sitting across the table from Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, as well as opposition leader Lapid. We heard, we heard from a father who rushed over from the funeral of his son's 18-year-old best friend, who had just been brutally murdered at the hands of Hamas. We spoke with the family of an 80-year-old father of five, a peace activist who drove Palestinian children to doctor's appointments, who was kidnapped from his home during the invasion. With tears in their eyes, his family recounted the inhumanity of the attack, the destruction of their home, and ultimately, the death of their brother while he was valiantly defending their home and family. In every meeting, the message was abundantly clear. 
Do not let the United States cower when the world starts to. Stand steadfastly in your solidarity. So we are here today as Republicans and as Democrats to assure you, we will not shrink back and shudder in fear as we will not shudder in fear as too many around the world already have. We will not sit quiet. as anti-Semitism is being promulgated in classrooms and campuses around the country. The brutal reality of Hamas cannot be diminished. They murder babies. They rape women. They abuse the elderly. They killed 30 of our fellow Americans, hundreds of our Israeli friends, and are currently, right now, holding 200 innocent men, women, and children hostage. How anyone in America could sympathize with these terrorists is truly unfathomable. Friends, there should not be a shred of anti-Semitism in our country. Not now, not ever. Not only today, but in the coming weeks and months, as Israel fights to secure their most basic human right, the right to life, the United States must remain resolute. In the Senate, we will continue to stand shoulder to shoulder with all of you, our Jewish friends in Israel, the United States, and around the world. May God be with those who have lost a loved one, those who are waiting on the phone for an update about a son or daughter, those who are facing unprecedented harassment and hostility, and those whose family members bravely serving in the Middle East. And may God bless Israel. God bless Israel. As she rightly defends herself against Hamas's brutal attacks, Israel, the United States will always have your back. Let's hold up our hands and vote. We stand with Israel. 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 Welcome, Ishai Rebo. (laughs) 
צהריים טובים, קהל יקר ואהוב. אנחנו ממש מרגישים זכות להיות כאן היום איתכם. זו הזדמנות גם לומר תודה לתמיכה הגדולה של ארצות הברית שמאפשרים את המעמד האדיר הזה. לא מובן מאליו. היום זה ראש חודש כסלו, ובראש חודש כסלו אנחנו יודעים שזה החודש שבו האור גבר על החושך. ועכשיו אני רואה מול העיניים שלי אור אין סוף. יש פה מלא אור, והוא ודאי ודאי יגבר על החושך הזה שחווינו בשבת הקשה הזאת. אבל מאז התגלה בעם שלנו, בתוך הכאב ובתוך השבר, התגלו עוצמות אדירות של אהבה, של נתינה, של חסד, של עין טובה. כל הפילוג שהיה... נעלם והפכנו להיות לב אחד. והיום, והיום אנחנו כאן במעמד עם מאות אלפי יהודים ותומכי ישראל ואוהבי ישראל. מעמד היסטורי. אז אני רוצה לנצל את הבמה הזאת איתכם ולומר פרק תהילים שכתב דוד המלך ככה בכוונה גדולה שיהיה לי זכות עם ישראל, שיהיה לי זכות חיילי צה"ל, שיהיה לי זכות הילדים, הילדות והמשפחות שנמצאות שם בשבי, שיחזרו בריאים בגופם ובנפשם, ושיהיה לי זכות הביחד הזה, כמו שכתוב, שהיה במעמד הר סיני, שזה לדעתי הכי קרוב למעמד הר סיני בכמות, שנזכה להיות כאיש אחד בלב אחד לנצח. אז נגיד פסוק ואתם תחזרו אחריי. שיר המעלות אשא עיניי אל הערים ואין יבוא עזרי עזרי מעם אדוני, עושה שמים וארץ. אל יתן אמות רגליך, אל ינום שומריך. הנה לא ינום ולא יישן שומר ישראל. אדוני שומריך, אדוני צילך על יד ימינך. יומם השמש לא יככה וירח בלילה. אדוני ישמורך מכל רע, ישמור את נפשך. אדוני ישמור צאתך ובואך מעתה ועד עולם. שיר למעלות, אשא עיניי אל הערים, שומריך, 
Please welcome Deborah Messing. Shalom, friends. I love you too. I know you are in pain. I know you are afraid. I know you feel alone and abandoned by people you thought were your friends. I know you feel misunderstood and maligned. I know because I do too. But looking out at all of us today, we also know that we are not alone because we have each other. We are all being tested. A tsunami of hate has crashed down upon us, and then a deafening silence. We see clearly now. We see naked, virulent Jew hatred being disguised as a noble call for liberation, and we reject it. What does Israel's defense and response to a terrorist attack have to do with an elderly Jewish man in California killed for holding an Israeli flag? This is madness. This is terrorism. But we will win. We always have. We are strong, resilient, and devoted and we will not lose ourselves. We will worry for our global Jewish family and also hurt for the innocent Palestinians used as human shields by Hamas. We will work to eviscerate Hamas and also pray for a free and flourishing Gaza. We will remember and work for the release of the 240 hostages as well as for the safety of the 2.2 million Gazans also held hostage by Hamas. We will pray for the success of the IDF in a war Israel did not start and did not want, but a war Israel will win because we must. Those who hate us deny our humanity and our right to exist. No matter, we know who we are. We know that even in, especially in darkness, we, span, we stand united, proud, resolute, with absolute moral certitude in our light. Like our ancestors, who for 3,000 years looked hate straight in the eyes, we too will prevail. We will care, take care of each other. We will take care of our brothers and sisters in Israel. We will fight and we will love ferociously. Our light will shine until the darkness is defeated. 
Am Yisrael Chai. were taken. Mothers, brothers, babies, grandmothers, we cannot allow the world to move on. We must not rest until these families are made whole. We have a number of them here with us today. In solidarity with them, I'd like to ask you to hold up your placards, their faces, for a moment of silence. Thank you. I now have the honor of introducing three family members of hostages, Orna Nutra, Alana Zaitschik, and Rachel Goldberg. May their courage and strength inspire us all. Good afternoon. My name is Orna Nutra, and I am Omer's mom. Omer, born one month after 9-11, celebrated his 22nd birthday only a few weeks ago, captive by Hamas. Omer is a warm, optimistic and people-loving person. Everywhere he goes, he immediately makes new friends. He is this big guy, six foot two, always with a smile on his face. In some ways, Omer grew up like any other kid on Long Island. He is truly a member of this wonderful Jewish community. He's crazy about sports, any sports, but he especially loves basketball. He was always a leader. Whether the captain of his high school, the Schechter School of Long Island, or the regional president of his youth group, USY. He is also a dual citizen of both the United States and Israel and was raised with a love and a passion for both of his homelands. So naturally, after graduating high school, he decided to take a gap year in Israel to connect with his roots. And the closer he grew to his new Israeli friends, the more he reflected on his own identity as a descendant of Holocaust survivors on both sides, he understood the importance of a strong Israel. So being the person that he is, he made the decision to join his new friends and serve in the IDF and protect the country. He was drafted as a lone soldier in the Armor Corps. He was protecting people when he was taken by Hamas. And since then, 
Our lives have turned upside down. From a place of deep pain, we hold strong for you, Omer. We speak in your name tirelessly. We hope and pray and we act. And I must believe that our prayers and actions have power. Omer, you're not just my beloved son. You touch so many in deep and profound ways. Bring them home. 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 Your friends, their parents, whole communities, both here and around the world, are praying and working for your safe return. And to everyone gathered here today, I want to tell you that there is power in speaking Omer's name, posting his picture, and keeping his story in the public eye, calling your representatives every single day. There is power in showing him the same love and compassion he has spent his young life showing everyone he meets. We all must use the power that we have to help bring Omer and all of the hostages home now. Bring them home. Bring them home. Bring them home. Thank you. My name is Alana Zajcik, and I'm here to tell you about love. On October 7th, my cousin, Sharon, her husband, David, their three-year-old twins, Emma and Yuli, my cousin, Danielle, her five-year-old daughter, Amelia, all six of them were brutally kidnapped from Kibbutz Nir Oz. While the kibbutz was ravaged by Hamas, they hid in their bomb shelter for hours until it filled with smoke and they could not hide any longer, at which point Sharon sent a haunting voice note to her family group chat, we're not going to make it out of this, we love you. The pain I have experienced since they were taken has been so sharp it follows my every breath I wake up each morning to remember this truth. My family is being held hostage by terrorists. I am here with you because I love my family and I promised I would scream to the ends of the earth for them. This unwavering love of family is the heart of what it means to be Jewish and it is more importantly the heart of what it means to be human. But for too many in the West, the suffering of hostage families like mine has become a footnote, collateral damage in service of some perceived higher universal truth. For too many, it feels like to care about one family, to love one child, is to diminish the suffering of another. But the simple human truth is that you don't have to choose. You can abhor the suffering of Palestinian families and the suffering of Israeli families like mine. You can, you can call for peace and the immediate return of the innocent men, women, and children who were violently taken from us. It doesn't need to be political to share in my grief or in the anguish that the Israeli people are feeling. To demand the release of the hostages is not an act of politics, nor is it a cry for war. It is an act of love and a cry for humanity. And love is the only thing that can repair our shattered hearts and bring us back together in the name of peace. Thank you.
My name is Rachel, and I am the mother of Hirsch Goldberg Polin, a wounded civilian American-Israeli kidnapped from the music festival on October 7th. Right now, we, how we are living is hard to describe to you. We hostage families have lived the last 39 days in slow motion torment. For 38 nights, none of us have slept the real sleep of the before. We all have third degree burns on our souls. Our hearts are bruised and seeping with misery. But the real souls suffering are those of the hostages. And they want to ask everyone in the world, all the screamers, the indifferent, the experts, the academics, the knowledgeable, the passives, the perfectly outraged, the righteous, the indignant, the haters, the leaders, the lovers, the every single one of us, why? Why is the world accepting that 240 human beings from almost 30 countries have been stolen and buried alive? These children of God range in age from nine months to 87 years. They are Christians, Muslims, Jews, Buddhists and Hindu. Why are they being left underground in the dirt? Abigail Moore Idan is three years old. She watched her parents get murdered in front of her and was then kidnapped. And she would like me to ask the world, why are you letting her stay in the dark in her trauma buried in the earth's crust? And Joshua Molel, who is a Tanzanian African graduate student studying agribusiness, would like for me to ask you why somehow his life actually doesn't matter. The world must prepare what we will say to them. There was a Christian German who hid Jews during the Holocaust and he was asked why he did such a heroic and dangerous act. His answer was simple. At least I will know when I die and stand before God, he will not ask me what he asked Cain in the Bible. Where were you when your brother's blood cried out from the ground? What the world needs to start thinking about today is, what will your excuse be? Bring them home now. Bring them home. Welcome the co-chairs of the Bipartisan Congressional Caucus to Combat Anti-Semitism, Senator Jackie Rosen, Senator James Lankford, Representative Chris Smith, and Representative Kathy Manning. Please join us now as we recite a prayer for the hostages. God of mercy and compassion, we pray, we plead that you bless, protect, and guard those of your people, Israel, and of your people from all faiths and all nations, mothers, fathers, sons and daughters, soldiers, civilians, adults, youth, and babies, the captured and the missing, who have been cruelly and heartlessly 
torn from their homes and carried off. May God have compassion on them and bring them out from darkness in the shadow of death. May God break their bonds, deliver them from their distress, and bring them swiftly back to their families' embrace. As we read in the words of the prophet Jeremiah, restrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for your work will be rewarded, declares the Lord. They will return from the land of the enemy. And so we pray before you, O God of redemption, fulfill speedily the words of Genesis. Quote, Here I am with you. I will watch over you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. Indeed, I will not leave you until I have done what I have said to you. May the Holy One do all that must be done so that relief rescue, and long life may be the lot of every one of the civilians and the soldiers who have been taken captive. We pray in the words of the 130th Psalm, Shir Hama'alot Mima'akim Karaticha Adonai. Out of the depths have we called you, O Lord. O Lord, hear our voices. Be attentive to our supplications, and let us say together, Amen. Amen. Welcome back to the stage, the Maccabees. We ask that everyone please join us in singing this prayer for our brothers and sisters in Israel, Achenu Kol Beit Yisrael. Let's have our voices be heard. Ah.
So today is all about unity. So we want to invite to the stage a very, very special friend. Everyone, please give it up for Matis Yahoo! Washington DC, let me hear you. 
welcome Israel's ambassador to the United States, Michael Herzog. My friends, my brothers and sisters, the Jewish state is under attack and the Jewish people are under attack. On October 7th, I received a call from a senior IDF general who shouted, Israel is at war, we are at war. Since then, our lives have changed. Thousands of Hamas terrorists infiltrated dozens of Israeli communities and tortured, murdered, and kidnapped every civilian they could find. They not only committed unimaginable atrocities, they documented and celebrated them. Let me be clear, we did not start this war, but we must finish it. We must finish the war to ensure that the Hamas murder machine is Gaza, in Gaza is dismantled for good. We must finish the war to send a loud and clear message to Hamas's evil sponsors in Iran and Iranian proxies. Israel will never tolerate any attack on our soil. And we must finish this war to return the hostages to you and to the families, I say, we will leave no stone unturned until we bring them back home. Bring them back home. There is simply no other choice for a nation that values life. Thankfully, we are not alone. The majority of Americans stand firmly with Israel. Thank you to President Biden and his administration for your steadfast support. Thank you to the numerous members of Congress from both sides of the aisle. Some of them are here for raising your voices in support of Israel. We will not forget your backing during these dark days. And now let me say to all of you, the hundreds of thousands of people gathered here today, you are incredible, you give us strength. Now is the time to raise your voice. We are witnessing mass rallies around the globe and also here in the U.S. vilifying Israel, glorifying Hamas, and celebrating the murder of Jews. We are witnessing Jewish students assaulted and silenced on college campuses. We are witnessing, we are witnessing Jewish demonstrators attacked and in some cases killed. The dark demons of anti-Semitism have been unleashed. The choice between good and evil has never been clearer. Do you stand with a terror organization that kills women, children, and the elderly in cold blood? Or do you stand with a democracy that does...
Do you stand with the democracy that does everything in its power to protect civilian life on both sides? My friends, there are defining moments in history, and this is one of them. At this moment, no one, no one can remain silent. We must raise our voices in support of the one and only Jewish state. Raise our voices against those who oppose Israel's right to defend itself. Raise our voices when we see Jew hatred being spewed unchecked. Raise our voices loud to denounce Hamad for what it is, the barbaric ISIS-like terror organization. Raise our voices loud to bring all the hostages back home. And raise our voices loud for those who no longer have a voice. My friends and my brothers and sisters, we are a grieving nation, yet we are united and determined. And together with you, through our shared voices, values, and strengths, together, together, we will defeat evil and we will prevail. I'm Israel Chai. Please welcome Pastor John Hagee, Dillard University President Dr. Rochelle Ford, and Anila Ali. As we gather here today, in Israel's darkest hour since the Holocaust, the Jewish people once again search the globe for friends. I am here to deliver a singular message. Israel, you are not alone. I want you to shout that loud enough for them to hear it in Jerusalem. Ready? Jerusalem, Israel, you are not alone. Israel, you are not alone. Israel, you're not alone. While the Jewish state faces the greatest danger since her rebirth 75 years ago, we pray for the people of Israel and the leaders of Israel. May God give you the wisdom of Solomon and the courage of King David and the victories of Joshua. You, the leaders of Israel, and you alone should determine how this war is going to be conducted and concluded. You decide, no one else. Israel has shown the world that it overcame the tragedy of the Holocaust through the power of hope. Israel has demonstrated the courage to make peace with its neighbors. Israel has always proved that it has the strength to wage war against its enemies. From the five Arab armies that tried to destroy the newly reborn state in 1948, to Hamas and Hezbollah, Iran's proxy armies, to my Jewish brothers and sisters, it is tempting to look at the present darkness and think that nothing has changed. However, things have changed. More than 40 years ago, I joined forces 
with an Orthodox rabbi, Rabbi Scheinberg, to bring Christians and Jews together in mutual love and respect. We stood shoulder to shoulder and we made this declaration. If a line has to be drawn, then draw that line around both Christians and Jews. We are one. We are one. We are one. Today we extend that line around everyone who is gathered here. We must all stand united with one voice and boldly declare over and over, Israel, you are not alone. After the October 7th massacre, we must all make choices. We either choose to love life or we choose death. We choose peace or terror. We choose Israel or Hamas. There is no middle ground in this conflict. You're either for the Jewish people or you're not. Look at history. From Pharaoh to Haman to Hitler, all of these anti-Semitic cowards are remembered only for their failed attempt to destroy God's chosen people. And, and Hamas is going to suffer the same fate. To Israel's enemies, making threats against Israel is nothing more than a self-fulfilling prophecy about yourself. When you speak of Israel passing away with a sudden storm, you're only speaking of your own demise. Where are the nations that have persecuted the Jewish people? They are historic footnotes in the boneyard of human history. Where is Israel and the Jewish people? The dis despite the efforts of Iran, Hamas, and Hezbollah to destroy the Jewish nation, Israel lives, Israel lives, Israel lives. Israel may be shaken, but she is not shattered. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob guarantees Israel's deliverance will come, as proclaimed every year during Passover. It says in every generation they rise against Israel to destroy it. And the Holy One, blessed be He, saves Israel from their hands. The Bible says, He that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. To those who seek to justify the slaughter of Israelis by demon demonizing the Jewish state, Israel is not merely a state. When millions of Zionists mention Israel, they don't just mean the only freedom-loving democracy. Israel is this and more. Israel is the apple of God's eye. Israel is the shining city on the hill. Israel says, God says of Israel, Israel is my firstborn son. Jer Jerusalem is the city of God. Jerusalem is the shoreline of eternity. Jerusalem is the eternal capital of Israel today and forever. There is only one nation whose flag will fly over the ancient walls of the sacred city of Jerusalem. That nation is Israel now and forever. Those of us standing here and millions of other Christians were not here during the Holocaust, but we're here now. 
and we stand shoulder to shoulder with the Jewish people. We stand until those 240 hostages are returned to their homes. For where there is unity, God Almighty will command his blessings. When America was attacked in World War II, victory was our only aim. And Israel should be afforded that same opportunity. For history has shown that without victory, there is no survival. Victory has, Israel has victory, and that victory will come when all of the hostages are safely home. Israel's victory comes when the terror tunnels have been destroyed. Is, Israel's victory will come when Hamas and Hezbollah are in the ash heap of history along with Haman and Hitler. There is no substitute for victory. May God bless Israel. May God bless the United States of America. May God bless the Jewish people. And may God bless all who have gathered here today until we overcome the tyranny of the Middle East. Israel, you are not alone today, tomorrow, and forever. God bless the Jewish state. God's timing is always perfect. For about six months, Rabbi Ari Berman, Yeshiva's president, and I have been trying to meet regarding partnerships with Dillard University's revived National Center for Black Jewish Relations. We finally connected on October 11th when Rabbi Berman had just returned from Israel. His heart was heavy and I said to him, the Bible says that the Jewish people won when Moses held his arms up. But who was holding Moses' arms? It was Aaron and her. Let us be your Aaron and her. Lean on us. At the same time, we must know that winning today will only happen when there is peace in the Middle East, and when there is an end to anti-Semitism and hate everywhere. Therefore, I ask you to join me in pausing to acknowledge that have been too many innocent people in Gaza, in Israel, who have died. And I pray for peace and safety for all human beings who are in harm's way. You, my brothers and sisters, are not alone. Together, President Berman and I co-wrote a statement that more than a hundred other college and university presidents and chancellors signed condemning the terrorism and calling upon all to act with more clarity in seeking truth and to stand with Israel and to stand with the Palestinians who suffer under Hamas's cruel rule in Gaza. We must stand with all people of moral conscience. 
We must seek understanding. We are committed to helping our students to find truth and understanding in this complex world. No one should be condemned or threatened for expressing their support or their advocacy for their nationality, their religion, or their ethnicity. Let's move beyond sound bites. Let's work together to promote understanding. We must remember that it was black American troops that helped to liberate the concentration camps during World War II. We must remember that Jewish leaders like Rabbi Abraham Joshua Herschel marched with Dr. Martin Luther King to end segregation and advocate for civil rights. We must promise to keep talking, to keep listening, and to help each other to understand each other better. We must lean into love, be empathetic. Being empathetic is what will help us to move forward. We understand that our families are all scared. We hold fear for those of us with loved ones in the military and those who live in harm's way. We live in fear that the help might not get to the people who need it most. As someone who is black and with indigenous ancestors, I know how important it is to fight the pull of hate that comes from fear. Therefore, we must help each other to fight the easy and the natural urge to give in to blind rage and hate and help each other to love humanity, to value each other, and respect each other in all cultures, in all people. Let's do this together. We stand with you against anti-Semitism and bringing the hostages home. Shalom. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu. I am Anila Ali. I stand before you as a Muslim American Pakistani, friend of the Jewish people. Inshallah, inshallah. I'm here to affirm to my Abrahamic brothers and sisters that you are not alone. Yes, we are all feeling the hurt, the pain, the fear, but we also stand united in hope that a better future for all of us is possible. Now, my brothers and sisters and young people in, Jew, in, in the Jewish culture, faith, we call it tikwa, and in Muslim faith, we call it taqwa. You see how close we are? In 1947, my birth country, Pakistan, emerged from a bloody partition of the British India. 14 million people, including my family, became refugees. One million people were killed, including my family. They were the founding fathers and mothers of Pakistan. But they told us, they looked at the next generation and they said, Let's move on. And we did. India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, 
we integrated refugees, we accepted the borders, and we focused on, a, on building a better future for all our generations. And in that spirit, I declare, the war to destroy the Jews and the Jewish homeland must end once and for all. The Holy Quran repeatedly expresses reverence for the Torah and praises the Jews, Jewish people. There is a chapter in the Quran, it's called Bani Israel. Bene Israel insists that the children of Israel will be gathered from, is, from exile back into their homeland. And let me tell you, Islamic law explicitly forbids attacking civilians, kidnapping babies, grandmothers. All of this violates the core of our religion and hiding behind civilians is both evil and cowardly. And teaching our children, our youth on campuses to hate, hate Jews is unforgivable. I have been to Israel three times and I have seen for myself how Muslims can gain by making peace with Israel. Partnering with the Jewish people and focusing on a future together. Let's look at United Arab Emirates. Brothers and sisters and young people, we are taking another delegation of Muslim American women leaders to Israel. Yes. And we will meet with Israelis and Muslims who, whose loved ones have been murdered on October 7th. And those Muslims who risk their lives to save dozens of Jews on that day. Let me tell all of you, Muslims are, and Jews are not destined to be enemies. We are stronger together. We are blessed together. We, all of us, are the connected children of Ibrahim. Peace be upon him. And now, today, we are called upon to fulfill that historic destiny together. I know this is a dark time, but this is also a historic moment. We will emerge stronger, more united than ever before, and together we will forge a lasting peace. Inshallah. Bezirat Hashem. Amin. And now, as a young, as these young Muslim, uh, Jewish students are proclaiming, I proclaim with you, Am Israel Chai. Am Israel Chai. Kids were running in every direction. Nobody knew which way was the way to safety. They're our seniors. They're our infants. They're just like any college kid in any city in America, with hopes, dreams, a future. This is a time to come together, to find common ground. And yet, the war in Israel and Gaza is thousands of miles away, yet it is having a tremendous impact here in the U.S. with anti-Semitism on the rise, especially of all places on college campuses. This is a protest uh, to celebrate the, quote, historic win of Hamas in Israel. And professors saying that they're exhilarated by Hamas's actions. 
been hearing calls for gas the Jews, uh, Hitler was right, and I'm the granddaughter of Holocaust survivors. It's devastating. Hundreds of UCLA students gathered for a solemn vigil for Israel. One thing I do know is that as much as possible, we need to work on consensus building, not with intimidation tactics, but with debate and discussion and civil discourse. Being publicly and proudly Jewish on campus is not easy right now, but I refuse to hide my Judaism or my support for Israel. I see posters of kids just like me or my friends being torn down by people who call themselves activists. These kids deserve to be at university, not in a cave in the middle of Gaza. We're all here, we're proud to be Jewish, we're determined, we're strong, and just like Israel will win its war against Hamas, we, the Jews and students, will win the war against anti-Semitism. We're coming together. That's what we see as the best way to counteract this hate, is to come together as a community. We hosted a vigil where over 750 students showed up. It was one of the most powerful moments I've ever experienced, just seeing so many people come together. It's so important that we all stay together as a community. No matter how scary it seems right now, we will not give up. Please welcome Michael Rappaport. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody in the back? Everybody in the back, everybody in the front, all you beautiful Jewish people, all you beautiful people from Israel. 38 days ago, Israel was attacked. We know what happened. The hostages must come home. Free every single one of them. There cannot be a ceasefire until the hostages are home. I have never felt this prideful to be Jewish in my life. It's been a crazy time, but Jewish people around the world, we have seen it all. We have heard it all. Israel is not going anywhere. Jewish people are not going anywhere. I encourage everybody to continue to support each and every one of us. And to the people that aren't with us, you're going to thank us later. All you young people in the front, you are beautiful. You're beautiful. Stay strong. All right. Stay safe. Stay sane and make sure you stay disruptive. I'm bringing up two beautiful young students who have been dealing with all the bullshit on campuses in this country. The shocking anti-Semitism, the anti-Jewishness that's taking place here on the college universities. Everybody make sure to pray, to send love to all the hostages, to all the families that are from all around the world. Make sure you don't forget them. I've talked to some of them here today. I'm bringing up Sabrina Sofer from the George Washington University. And Noah Fay from Columbia University. Listen to what they have to say and I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Shalom lekulam. Hello, everyone. You will now hear the voices of students. And I want to open with one message that has helped me through these tough times. If you want to save the world, go home and love your family. We are here at the heart of our American home, united as one family. Am Israel, arm in arm with the American people. From family, we acquire life-guiding principles. 
My family's history traces generations of Torah scribes dedicated to preserving Jewish heritage. From Egypt to southern Russia, Dagestan, once my grandparents' homes, Zionism and Israel afforded protection and prosperity. October 7th confirms that cancerous Jew hatred festers on our streets and institutions. At my George Washington University, we've seen anti-Semitic hate fests, rallies supporting murders of Israelis, unconscionable insults projected onto our library, our Hillel building broken into, our kidnapped posters torn from the inside, threats of violence, our hearts remain shattered by that dark Saturday and the hate we see today. But our spirit is unbroken. Our obstacles are opportunities for the righteous and audacious. Professors who condemn Hamas. Administrators striving to guarantee Jewish safety. When we hear genocidal chants, my GW peers and I, from organizations like Chabad GW, GW for Israel, and GW Hillel, we sing Hatikva and Ose Shalom. These are songs of hope and peace. In the words of Rabbi Levi Shem Tov, we fight anti-Semitism with strong and informed Semitism, with vibrancy. Resilience is what marks our legacy. No one, no one in this crowd, no student, no person stands alone. Nothing, 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 nothing at all can splinter the Jewish soul. The Jewish soul, the American resolve, allied together, shall never surrender values of civilization, democracy, and humanity. Kol Israel arevim ze All of Israel are responsible for one another. We fought for it. We died for it. As Prime Minister Begin once proclaimed, we will forever stand by Israel. We face an arduous battle, but we shall not tremble in fear. Our stars of David will shine on our chests and in our hearts. My beloved family, this generation is ready to lead, to fight with steadfast confidence and unconquerable moral courage. The people of Israel live now and forever. Netzach Israel lo yishaker, the promise of Israel will endure. Columbia University. 
On my campus, over 100 professors have openly advocated for Israel's destruction, justifying the murders of our Jewish sisters and brothers and defending their murderers. I have said this before and I will say it again. I am a black Native American Jewish woman and I will not be silenced. No matter how many anti-Israel demonstrations I must walk past on my way to class, no matter how many of my professors support the students defending Hamas, no matter how many times we are told to cower in fear, I will continue to shout. We should not have to do this, but we can do this. We must do this, and I will tell you why. Until October 7th, I think my classmates and I had forgotten not only why we love Israel, but why we need Israel. As individuals, we may have many homes. As Jews, we have but one. We have a long journey ahead of us, I know. And I know that many of my peers, faced with so much hatred and anti-Semitism on campus, are feeling helpless and hopeless. But to them, I say, look around you. We are the Jews of the diaspora. This is how we fight. We fight loudly and we fight peacefully. We are far from helpless. We are far from hopeless. At Columbia and elsewhere, our administrators are beginning to stand with us. And here in our nation's capital, America stands with us. We are not alone. Theodore Herzl, founder of Zionism, wrote, whole branches of Judaism may wither and fall but the trunk remains. We lost a beautiful branch on October 7th, we did. But as I look in front of me now, I see a very sturdy trunk. And it is from this trunk that I know more branches will grow should we will it. Toda Raba. Please welcome the President and CEO of the Jewish Federations of North America, Eric Fingerhut, and the CEO of the Conference of Presidents, William Daroff. On behalf of the leadership and the 50 member organizations of the Conference of Presidents, of major American Jewish organizations, I thank you for coming today to this historic March for Israel. And on behalf of the leadership of the 146 Jewish federations across North America, I thank you for your resolve and your determination to show up today on the National Mall, America's front yard, to exercise our democratic rights. We have indeed made history today with over 290,000 of us gathered here on the National Mall. This is the largest pro-Israel gathering in history. There are also 250,000 watching on live stream and C-SPAN right now. And there are also 900 participants from the Detroit Federation who arrived at the Dulles Airport a few hours ago whose bus drivers refused to take them to a pro-Israel event. Look what we can do in just over a week. Imagine what we can do. 
Today's crowd brings together every sector of American life, people of all faiths and creed, of all races and background, to say together with unity and strength, we support Israel's fight to rid itself of the terror threat and restore safety and security to its people. We demand the immediate and unconditional release of the hostages held in captivity in Gaza. Bring them home. Bring them home. Bring them home. And we will not allow the haters and the anti Semites to intimidate us. We are America, and America is us. We thank and appreciate the bipartisan support of Israel from the President of the United States, Joe Biden and the United States Congress, as reflected here today. We want them to know that support for Israel in America is overwhelming and bipartisan and transcends geography and ideology. Americans support Israel and understand why it must be victorious in its war against the Hamas terrorist army. And America's leaders must continue to reflect the will of the American people. And today's historic crowd also brings together every segment of the diverse Jewish community in this great country. We stand here together on the National Mall proudly to declare our unity in face of the most dangerous threat to the Jewish people since the Holocaust, the need to defeat the murderous, barbarous Hamas army that has already tortured and murdered thousands of Jews and will continue on this path if not stopped. As we face our, this challenge, our core values of Torah, our heritage, tefillah, our prayerful quest, and tzedakah, acts of goodness and kindness, guide us forward with a unique strength. Of course, our work does not stop here today. We must continue to march in our communities and in every form we have available to us. Contact your members of Congress and urge them to support the supplemental package of aid to Israel. Contact your alma mater and demand that they act against the anti-Semitism on campus and defend the rights of Jewish students to go to school free of intimidation and harassment. Keep the hostages in the forefront of our thoughts and actions, in our conversations and on our social media and in our prayers. Bring them home. Bring them home! 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 And support and advocate for Israel in your communities, your businesses, your schools, and your neighborhoods. Support for Israel in the capital begins with support for Israel back home. This will be a long fight. In the words of the psalm, we must neither slumber nor sleep. As we leave the National Mall today, we do so with gratitude for all the Americans of all faiths and walks of life who have joined us in this march. You know that Israel's fight against Hamas is no different than America's fight against ISIS or Al-Qaeda. And victory must be fought in the same manner. And as we leave this National Mall today, we do so with gratitude to all who helped make today possible, and especially to the law enforcement agencies who made our visit to the nation's capital a priority. And we leave with a love of America deep in our souls. Let our faith in God, our love of country, and our love of all the people of Israel guide us today and always.
Baruch Atab of Oecha, Baruch Atab of Zetecha. Blessed were you in coming. Blessed may you be in your travels home. And now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome again, Omer Adam. <laughs> people around the world unite together like now we need to keep speaking up we need to keep posting we need to keep getting together and keep showing the world how strong we are because each and every one of you makes the difference so Bezrat Hashem we will return all the hostages and all the chayalim safe and sounds back home and it will never happen again so let's pray all of us together with Modani. I'm Israel Chai. Modani kol boker shechzal tar nishmati Modani al beged shena tar gufi shelo yehuta tashomer. Let's 
תודה רבה 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 רבה, תודה רבה רבה אני רוצה להזמין אלינו חבר יקר ואהוב, אח מוכשר וענק, איפה הכפיים לישי ריבו? חברים, בכבודו ובעצמו, עומר אדם! תודה רבה, תודה רבה. יא יא יא, אוף קורס, וגם ידעו הלב שלי, יא יא יא. שירו איתנו. כבוד עם ישראל. הלב שלי נקרא לשניים, מה שלא אתה שפחה למים, כמו סופה מן הים, כמו טרפה של מרים פה ואין תרופה בים. הלב שלי נעים ידיים, כמו מועד לא עומד על הרגליים, שבטים שלו כבר השמיים הם לי חובה.
אנחנו לקראת סיום, אבל אני רוצה, בזכות המעמד הקדוש והיקר הזה, אני רוצה להזמין יהודי יקר, שהוא ורבים וטובים כמוהו עשו עבודת קודש, הוא הגיע במיוחד לארץ ישראל, ואני רוצה שתעשו לו הרבה הרבה כפיים, למסירות נפש של האנשים האלה, הצדיקים, עובדי זק"א, הקדושים. עכשיו, בנוכחות האנשים האלה שהם ודאי וודאי מליצי יושר אצל הקדוש ברוך הוא, שעשו דברים שרק הם קיבלו תפקיד לעשות, שבעזרת השם, השם יתמלא רחמים על עם ישראל, והביא לנו כבר גאולה, והבדל לנו את השבויים ואת החטופים שיחזרו כבר. נשמור על כל החיילים שלנו. אז ביחד נקדש שם שמיים עכשיו ביחד ונגיד שמע ישראל אדוני אלוהינו אדוני אחד
תודה לעומר אדם, תודה לכולם, השם ישמור אתכם. ניפגש בירושלים! Please, please sing along with us as loud as you possibly can. We want to hear each and every one of you. Am Yisrael Chai. Am Yisrael Chai. Am Yisrael. Am Yisrael. Amen. 
Thank you for attending today's rally. Please make your way to the nearest exit and get home safely.